Hi all and welcome to Southern Cross Amateur Astro and our video user guide for APT where today we're going to take our first look at autofocus aid. Uh, this is something that can give a lot of people problems. Um, this isn't a full in-depth look at it, it's just a quick overview. I'll be doing another series of videos that will cover everything you need to know about autofocus auto aid and measuring your microns and dealing with focus or backlash etc. But for now I'm just going to run through this and have a look at it. Uh, hopefully I'll get a clear night soon and I can get out and do the full in-depth guide. But here we go. So even before getting into autofocus aid itself, there's a few things you need to do to get things set up to make it effective for focusing. Uh, the first is finding the critical focus zone, and this is something APT can help you with through the object calculator. Um, then you've got to find your microns per step for a focus motor. And I've done a video I've uploaded that I'll link to uh, showing how that is done. Um, not 100% necessary, but much better than using trial and error. Uh, you need to deal in some way with uh, focus motor backlash. Uh, the simplest way to do that is with a final inwards move. It won't get rid of all your backlash, but it will help. Uh, then you need to determine the correct focus and move step. And this ties in with your microns per step for your focus motor. Um, if you know the microns per step, uh, APT can calculate about what you'd need for your move steps. If you don't do your microns per step, then you've got to do it by trial and error. And then depending on how lucky you are the first time you do it, um, you might take some time getting it. And then you need to get close to the focal point in some way, uh, whether you use a Bartonov mask, focus aid, or maybe a position on your uh, focus, a position that you've used previously that you know is close to the focus point just get close to it in some ways and once all that done then you can go in and do all your settings and use autofocus aid but for now we'll go in and we'll start at the top and uh, just work our way through so we'll probably start with the easiest part of the whole process for uh, autofocusing and that's your critical focus zone, your CFZ. It's something you actually don't even need to know yourself because as long as it has the right details, APT will calculate it for itself. Now I'm not going to go into too many details about what it is and how it works out. Um, I've got that covered in, I will be covering that in a later video when I go deeper into autofocusing. But I'll link to a uh, talk Ivo gave on the Astro Imaging channel uh, about focusing and he covers it in there quite well. So you can have a look at that if you want to. But to get this CFZ you need to go to your tools menu and the object calculator. And you need to ensure that the focal length and scope diameter are both correct. Because the CFZ is basically based on the F ratio of your scope. So as long as these are right, APT will be able to calculate it for themselves. You don't actually need to know it unless you want to do some, some of your own calculations. Uh, just remember that the focal length needs to take into account anything that changes that focal length. So if you're using a reducer, you've got to reduce the focal length to match what the reducer does. So like I said, mine's actually a 714. I've got a 0.8 reducer which technically works out to 571 millimeters, but I do know from use that uh, plate solving reports that it's 560 millimeters, so that's what I've put in there. Now, if you want to know for yourself what the uh, CFZ is, simply hit the recalc button, take a look into your log panel at the bottom, and the last thing it lists is the critical focus zone. So for this setup I've got, it's 85 microns. And that's it for uh, the critical focus zone. Like I said, you don't need to know it, uh, but you need to give the right information for APT to work with it. So we're just going to move on from here now. And what are we going to do next? And what's next is uh, measuring the microns for your focus motor. Um, I've covered this in another video recently, I'll link to that. I'm not going to go into a lot here because it's mostly covered in that video. Um, but uh, it's also something you don't need to do. But it does save a lot of trial and error with the settings in, in autofocus aid later on. Um, 
try and be as accurate as you can when you do the measurements because you've got to remember we're talking microns which are one thousandth of a millimeter so if your measurements are, are way off you can really create yourself more problems than you solve but if you can get them close at least it'll give you a starting point for the settings in autofocus aid so i'll just leave that for now and we'll move on and now we're going to deal with another issue that uh, i'll be covering in a very in-depth uh, video shortly and that's dealing with the backlash of your focus motor um, this is a subject that is quite difficult um, and how much you want to go into dealing with the backlash uh, will vary but uh, i will be doing a very in-depth talk about that very shortly but for now if you don't have anything set up for your backlash assistance um, the easiest thing to do is to go into your tools or in your apt settings and on the scope and focuser tab set a final inwards move now how big this move is will depend on uh, your focuser and your telescope uh, my telescope has only 18,000 steps so a figure like 700 covers totally any backlash I might have um, this is actually the simulator so and it has 50,000 steps but because it doesn't change much and you know you have a fixed value for your backlash and everything else in it um, it doesn't need much but I suggest setting 500, 750, 1000 um, if you have a scope with a lot of movement you might have one with 40,000 or whatever um, you might want to set this figure a bit bigger because you just want it to make sure you cover the total area where there might be any backlash on the inwards move and that won't solve your backlash issues totally but it'll help deal with them for now and like I said I'll be going into another video later on going into the backlash um, I can't really do much at the moment I need a clear night for that and I'm just not getting them so that will happen then and I think we'll just move on from there now so the next one we'll look at is uh, getting close to focus um, it doesn't matter how you do this you just need to be able to get close to focus whether you use the button button of aid with a button of mask uh, or you use some um, focusing aid or if you have a point somewhere where you've been using your scope for a little while and you know about where it needs to be for your focuser to be in focus you can even use that but the idea is just get close to focusing the focused and uh, APT and autofocus aid will handle the rest for you when we get in there so that covers about that without actually going into autofocus aids um, going to do that now and go in and have a look at some of the settings we need to get set up to try and make it work the best it can so now we'll start up autofocus aid and take a look at what it is and what we need to do uh, it can be accessed either from your tools tab uh, at autofocus aid there or the shortcut alt a will also launch it and this is what it looks like um, you have a main window on the left. This is where your graph will come in when you do your focusing steps uh, It'll hopefully end up forming a nice U shape in here And we'll just start at the top here. The first one selects the method you're going to use um, Depending on what you have set up in focus craft, which I've covered in another video. I'll link to um, You can either use full width half maximum uh, half flux diameter or inverse power um, I recommend inverse power or HFD with uh, ASTAP as the, probably the best two methods to use but you can use what you want take a look at the focus craft videos and decide what you want to do so that's up there I'll be using inverse power at the moment then you need to decide what uh, algorithm you want to use uh, one pass is exactly what it says it makes one pass based on the number of steps you've selected and that's it it picks it where it's going to be in focus flexible is based on the one pass but if it gets to the end and doesn't like the look of your curve or you've got a few dots over the place it may take extra images to try and determine where the focus point is and if it needs to do that it will usually run a second pass uh, just to make sure it's got it right so that's one to use um, that's a quicker one because it doesn't always do the second part and then you have the middle or two or the better of two and these boats work well but what it does is simply does two passes in the middle it'll take a, a reading and then on each pass and pick somewhere in the middle as the focus point 
or you can go better of two where it'll pick the better of the two uh, final results. So that's your options there. Uh, I'll just go on flexible for now. Loop focusing just means it continues running the focusing round and round and round and round, uh, looping through. Um, it's handy if you want to see how temperatures and everything affect your focusing overnight. Um, it's okay if you're not imaging, but <laughs> there, that's something. If you want to do some anal analysis of the of how your focusing is working, um, that's what you'd use loop focusing for. Now you can either record the results or not. Now if you have this checked, it creates a small file called autofocus uh, of autofocus results, just so you can study what's going on, and that just contains the last the final position it's in for the focusing and just a few details on it. Now you can use autofocus aid to calculate calculate the backlash. Uh, it will calculate it in the outwards direction. Um, I'm trying to work on a way to be able to use autofocus aid in a slightly different way, but that'll be covered when I get into uh, dealing with your backlash and it's one of the reasons I need a clear night so I can test things. Come on, skies. Um, and it can also be used to calculate your filter offsets. Um, if you've got a filter wheel, you can run this and it'll run to each filter. You pick a filter you want to start with as your normal filter. Um, I like to start with the darkest filter I have and work from there. So all moves from my HA filter will be inwards. And that's what I just like to do. But you can use any filter you like and it will calculate the offsets for those filters uh, to get the focus. And then of course you have your run button. Um, I can't remember what the run, run does if you shift click on it. There you go, shift click. Uh, it'll, it'll redoing, recalculate, there you go. Um, so you can see the effects of if you change uh, the number of points or anything like that, or your tolerance. So that's just uh, something you can do. That's what shift click does. <laughs> I've never used it, so I had to have a look. Uh, then you've got the status, which will tell you at the moment it's idle, but whether it's moving or imaging or pausing or whatever. Uh, so that's just what that tells you. Uh, the analyzer, what that does, you can set it to um, export the data into a CSV file that you can open up in a spreadsheet program and analyze the data. So that's all that is there. Um, shift clicking on that one that's another one I haven't used so I'm gonna to have to take a look at it um, what's it do shift click copies the detailed data fast track into the clipboard so um, you can copy that and look at it yourself or maybe send it in if you're having problems control click imports the data there you go <laughs> uh, so you can have a look at someone else's data but that's what shift clicking there does and control clicking and then lastly, we have the uh, settings box. And this is where you need to get into and have a look around. Now, first up is the number of test points. And this is how many points it will tr test the focus and take a reading from. Um, I recommend 10 or 12. Uh, it's up to you. Don't go too low, otherwise you might not get the focus you want. And don't go too many. Um, it might take too long for you. But I find 10 to 12 work quite well. Uh, the minimum number of points for the curve fit, so like in this case it does 10, it'll use at least at least 8 for the curve fit. Um, sometimes it'll use 10, sometimes it'll use 9, and sometimes it'll use 8. But generally, you know, if that's 2 to 4 less than your top up here is generally um, a good way to go. So, you know, 12 and 8's good, 10 and 8's good. Um, you don't want to go too fewer points, but... Now the focus a step move, um, this is where your critical focus zone and your micron per steps come in. Um, by default, if you hit auto, um, by default it'll have four in here. Um, and that's how many microns per step you've got. For my real telescope, it's um, about 2.9 or three. Uh, so I'd enter that in there. And from that, using your critical focus zone information that APT creates from the object browser, it will calculate about what steps you may need uh, to use autofocus A effectively. If you haven't measured the microns, um, you can either use the default or make a slight change uh, in there for the calculations. Uh, but with what I got in there for the uh, 
simulator here, I just click OK, and it works out that the focus of move step should be 101. Um, that's a big move, but uh, that's you know, guessing that it's a very fine steps on the focus, which generally aren't that low. Um, if you don't measure the microns, uh, you can do the auto with the, with the default and see what it comes up with. If you start getting a weird sort of graph and you know you're near photo, focus, then you might want to come back in and just manually change the move step size. Um, there's a few more details in the written user guide about how to do that, and I will go into it more in the deep dive video I'm planning on doing. Then you have your maximum moves count. And this is really uh, for when you're using flexible. Um, like I said, if you get to the end of the run and it's not sure where your focus point is, it will continue taking images. It'll move, take an image, move, take an image in whichever direction it needs. And this just sets a cap on how many it can take before it decides to give up. Um, the default is quite high, I can't remember what it is, but I set mine about 20 or 25, so I'm not taking images all night trying to get focusing. And then of course you have your pause. Um, this can be one second, two seconds, or whatever you like it to be there, whatever you need. Uh, your default exposure, this is used if there is no figure set uh, for a per filter in uh, your settings. So with your filters in here, you can go in and you can set auto focus exposures. They will be used first, okay? So that's what you use first. Um, then it'll use, if you have a figure in here, it'll use that figure. And if you don't have a figure in there, if you empty that out, it will use whatever you've got in your time on your camera tab. So it's up to you whether you set it or not. Um, but uh, it's probably best to set a default exposure. I set six and I just use that for my DSLR. It won't affect the figures for my uh, mono cam simply because they're set in the focus in the filter wheel. Um, if you're using a DSLR, you may want to set the default uh, exposure uh, 3200 or default ISO 3200 for that. Uh, that works for me. Uh, for a uh, dedicated cam, uh, you can set your binning. Um, generally, a bigger binning is a bit better. Um, this the uh, Simulator cam only has a one by one binning. Uh, I generally do use four by four binning simply because it makes a smaller image so it's a faster download um, and it works quite well anyway. And the default gain if you're using a dedicated camera. Uh, if you're using a region of interest or you want to use a region of interest, which is another way to reduce the size of the image you're actually taking and downloading so it's a bit quicker, you can set that in here. Um, I prefer to do my focusing on the same size image that I'm going to be using. So it depends on what you want to do there. Now I'm not going to go much into this bottom part here. Um, the rejection is you know, how it rejects points. Um, I've never played with any of these. I can't tell you about it. All I know is what I've been told and that est estimation is probably the quickest and easiest. And I just leave it at that and same with the tolerance. Um, I can't help you much with that one. I wouldn't play with it unless you know what you're doing. And same with the search method. Um, linear is said to be the best rather than of linear and medium. They're very similar. Uh, I think median's a little bit better, but linear is faster. So that's why I just leave it on linear. I've never actually tried median, so you can give that a test if you want. Now, if you're using Focus Craft uh, with its full settings, um, in your settings here you, you can and you're not using in first power or as tab um, you might want to limit it to one star rather than having it trying to calculate on multiple stars it can speed things up and less chance to fail uh, but i've seen i don't use that it, it doesn't really affect me at all um, it's up to you what you're using now if you're using an off access guider uh, you may want to pause guiding during the uh, focusing stage because with the uh, focuser moving in and out, your guiding is going to go uh, go to hell anyway. So disable that, especially if you've got a uh, focuser, a um, off-access guider. Now the last thing is uh, keep last run 
focusing images this is up to you you can get it to store the um, images from the last run and you can go have a look at them if you need to I don't bother with that at all but these are the settings I'm using in the uh, simulator here they're not exactly the same ones I use in real life like my focus and move sets even using auto comes out to be about 43 44 which works fine with mine so I'm going to click OK on that and then what I'll do is I'll just do a quick run I'll just do a single part oh, I'll do a flexible why not it should be pretty right the problem with doing this in the simulator is the simulator virtually gives you the same results uh, it does vary the focusing point occasionally but generally it gets the results you want when you need it so I'm just going to hit run on that now oh I can't yet just remember from your focus craft video to do a manual start when you're using run you need to have calculate turned on uh, like I said say in my focus craft video if you're doing it from a plan uh, the command in a plan or through session craft um, you don't need to have it turned on it will automatically be used but doing a manual start like this you must have calculate turned on otherwise you just get a message telling you to you know set calculate or use uh, focusing aid so I'll hit run now <coughs> this will take about two minutes uh, using inverse power which isn't too bad you know at the beginning of the night you do this and all it does is it'll take 10 images you know take an image uh, calculate move now I can just about guarantee the next image will be worse than this one so I'll, the dot will be up higher so this is a dot from a single run um, you can hold over it to see what the result is um, there you go I told you to go up <laughs> but um, for a single run uh, you get a dot uh, if it has to do a second run or you're using best of two or median of two then it'll be the second run will have rings instead of dots so that's just a way for you to know the difference so off we go here um, this will like I said take a few minutes so I've only got it on 10 steps so it won't take too long so what it'll do to run through the 10 steps when you're only doing a single run it runs through the 10 steps and then it goes back again it images where it thinks the uh, focus point is and you can see that changing in inverse power up here as it goes through um, but I found that pretty much always the first one when you're using the simulator that's about where your uh, best will be from the rest I don't know why but that's the way it does it so it's going down so we're getting down close to that one uh, the next one will probably be just about right on it uh, calculate calculate there you go it's actually a little bit better but as you can see the curve starting to develop here and as you see on focus aid uh, focus craft it's also starting to get the curve develop on there and this is what you'll see on your folk when you have an autofocus run your focus aid if you're calculating on every one of them it will have a virtually a flat line uh, as your imaging stays the same because if it starts changing conditions are changing but when you do a focus run you'll hopefully get a nice curve to fit in there so this is looking good but simulator it pretty much always comes up virtually the same every time just the actual focus point will move occasionally I think the first 20 or 30 times I've done playing around with this uh, it actually had a much higher focus point it was about a hundred higher so it's found what it thinks is the best focal point now as you can see it's not a bad curve maybe a little bit off um, but it's not too bad you can see it was going to continue up and there you go that's 24852 now because that's a little bit off like that you may want to run it again and just to get a fuller curve but I'm happy with that that's a good looking curve and that's what I'd keep um, so that's what that, that does in there now just before we finish with focus aid um, as I said you can calculate the filter offsets um, and what that does it asks you you pick the filter you want as the base 
uh, you click on run it will confirm that that's the filter you want to use for your base and then you just click yes to continue I'm not going to do it here because there's eight filters set up so I'm not going to sit here and wait for it to go through so I'll just click no and what it'll do once it knows that it'll go to the first filter run through all eight of your all of your filters um, all the way through it uses every filter position so even if you've only got a few filters in there it will use every position on the filter wheel and then it'll take the readings it's got uh, work out where the one you've selected as your base sits and then do plus and minuses in your um, settings tab to uh, give you the offsets there so that's what this is here um, these aren't calculated ones these are the ones that are set by default for the simulator so that's it there and that's it for focus aid um, I hope this does help you a bit uh, as I said I want to do a really in-depth one in this where it's running live so you can see it actually having in reality um, because the uh, simulator just makes it too nice and handy so that's just the way it works but uh, I'll finish this one off now um, I wish you all clear skies and I will talk to you in a later video. Take care, everyone. See yous.